Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Dan Armendaris, a TA for Computer Science E1. You're watching one of our videos of the week. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about Apple's Automator. The latest version of Mac OS X includes a piece of software called Automator. It is used to decrease repetitive tasks into relatively simple ones. So let's just dive right in. Let's take a look. If you, you can open it from your Applications menu on your Macintosh HD. When you open it, you see this window here. On the far left, you see a library with a list of applications. The center column is a list of actions. And then the farthest right column shows what's called the workflow. Now, you drag actions from the action column into the workflow column to create the resultant workflow. After you've created your desired workflow, you hit run, your workflow runs, and whatever work you're trying to accomplish is then done. So let's take a look at some basic workflows. So let's say you get up in the morning, and all you want to do is open up your 10 favorite websites. Well, you can actually create an automator workflow that will simplify this process for you. So let's take a look. In order to do that, you would have to use the Safari web browser. So in the library, find the Safari application. Next, you find a list of actions that Safari supports. Next, what you want to do is find the display web pages action. Underneath the action and library columns, you'll notice that there is actually some text describing what the action can do. In this case, it reads, this action displays web pages in Safari when given the URL addresses. Use this action with the get specified URLs action. So it's telling us exactly what we need to do in order to open web pages in Safari. It says, first, use the get specified URLs action. Now, in order to add an action to your workflow, you just simply drag it from the action column over into the workflow column. Get specified URLs, and there it is. So you'll notice that as soon as I drag the get specified URLs action over into the workflow, the actions column reorganized in order to display the most commonly used actions after this. So first, you can see, is display web pages. So let's just click and drag that to be next in the workflow. You'll notice that on the workflow section, there are the two actions that we've added. Get specified URLs, and next to that is the number one, implying that it's the first action in the workflow. And number two is the display web pages. Let me shrink these columns a little bit so we can see these better. So let's just take a quick break and take a look at what is actually happening in this workflow section. You'll notice that the first action, get specified URLs, seems to point into the next section. You'll notice that also there is a small text here that says URLs. What this implies is that the first action is supplying URLs to the second action. And this would make sense because in order for Safari to be able to display web pages, you have to input URLs into it. So we want to have a total of 10 URLs. So let's click on the Add a New Item button nine times because we already have one item there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and begin editing the addresses. So let's begin with a few geeky ones. Slash dot, dot org, hit return for the next one. Dilbert.com, MacRumors.com, and Gadget.com, personal favorite web comic, whattheduck.net, arstechnica.com, what are some other ones? dpreview.com, Imaging-resource.com, and I need one more, w3.org. Great. Now we have 10 URLs in our get specified URLs action. So now we have our workflow. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we click Run. Now you notice that in the lower right-hand corner, it says Display Web Pages is running. That's the particular action in our workflow. Now, what you don't notice is that behind this window, Safari is actually opening up all of these web pages. Here's Mac Rumors, uh, Dilbert.com, oh, and Gadget's coming up right now. Slash dot is back here. 
What the duck just popped up real quick. Ars Technica is coming up. So as you can see, the workflow is operating as planned. So that's just one example of a workflow that you can run. Let's take a look at another one. Let's say that on your most recent vacation you, take, you took numerous photos. And they're all cryptically named. So right here I have two cryptically named files. Just as an example to show you what you can do with a much larger set of photos. So I've selected both. Let's go ahead and control click it. You notice that down at the bottom of the context, contextual menu that comes up, there's an automator's uh, menu, and you can click Create Workflow. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see in the Workflow section, the two files that I selected are currently there. So let's go ahead and find the Finder section in the library and the rename Finder Items Action in the Finder selection. Uh, finder Item is basically just the file. So now if we click and drag this underneath the previous action that was added for us, it's going to give us a warning. What it's basically saying is that by running this action, you're actually going to change files themselves, and that is, of course, the file names. Uh, it's giving us the option to add a copy finder items action. What this will do is actually copy the files before it renames it. This isn't what we want, so we'll click Don't Add. Now what you'll notice is that it adds an action here. Let me resize it for you with options on how to rename your particular files. So in this case, we don't want to replace it with the date or time. Let's instead make it make sequential. So now what, what it's asking us is to add a number to a new name. Right here, since it's, this is from a New Hampshire trip, I will type in an age trip. Now there are various options that you can select, but you can see from the example down below that it's going to name them like this, nhtrip-1, and it's trip dash two, etc. So let's go ahead and try running our workflow. Now, if we go to the folder with the photos, you'll see that those horrifically named files are now named something that we can recognize. This is actually very handy. Imagine how much time this will save you for hundreds or even thousands of files. I've just given you a very limited sample of some of the things that Automator can do. I invite you to explore it on your own and see what else you can try. There are many things that it can do. You can mass mail a particular email to lots of people in your address book. You can find people's birthdays in your address book, create a card for them and email it to them. You can resize photos and import them into iPhoto. The options are huge. Go ahead and take a look. If you go to apple.com and click on the Mac OS X link, you can find the Automator section where they have numerous tutorials and ways for you to get started. Well, my name is Dan Armandaris. I hope you enjoyed this video of the week. Thank you for watching. Oh crap! Okay, hold on. Just, just that's an awesome room. That has to go. It's like he disappears, and then you see the top of his head. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at some basic workflows. Um. Okay. Now I got to come up with one. With. Safari is opened. Waiting. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Only one of them opened. Does anybody else find this funny? <laughs> Only one of the pages opened. Oh, no, no, it didn't. No, two pages opened. Oh, oh, it's opening. Oh, I see. It waits until. It waits for the load to complete. It waits for the load to complete. Ah, it's doing them sequentially.